Hello everyone, welcome to Live with Pastor Nancy. Um, if you're logged on with us, I'd love to hear from you and let you know that you're able to, let us know that you're able to get this signal. We uh, love being able to come and join you this way and talk to you and uh, we're always glad to get to spend the time with you. We have a service tonight that I'm getting ready um, to minister tonight. Um, but we love getting to do this right before the service, so we invite you to join the service after this. Uh, hi, Pastor Ruby. So glad to see you're on. And Brother Billy Miller, you just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Brother Billy. And uh, different uh, Bible school students, so glad to see that you're on and glad that you've joined with us tonight. And there's Miss Lisa French. She's, jo she's always so Johnny on the spot. I love that. So good to see you, and uh, well, I'm glad that you joined me. I can't really see you; you can see me, but <laughs> we're just uh, we're glad that you're that you're able to join with us. We have some uh, meetings coming up. Um, I, I don't even quite know those the exact dates of the meetings in in uh, December that we're doing in Fireball and we're doing in Merced. So we're looking we're looking forward to getting back on the road and having some meetings before long. Uh, but until the time that we can see you on the road, we love getting to be able to come with you, uh, come to you this way. Um, some of the things that I had in my heart that I was thinking of that I wanted to share with you tonight, just real quickly, um, is that there's two things that are so important that we have to know. Every time we're faced with a need, every time we need to receive something from God, there's two things we have to know, and what that is, is we have to know, number one, God's will, but number two, we have to know His ways. And so much of the time, we can just focus on teaching that it's the will of God, yes, that salvation, of course, being born again is the will of God, but also healing is the will of God, prosperity is the will of God, victory is the will of God, living a life of peace, living a life of joy, all these things are the will of God. But it, we won't experience them until we know the ways of God. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about that tonight, knowing the will of God, but also knowing the ways of God. You know, I remember my dad, you know, my dad, you've heard me tell so many stories about him and he was a cotton and wheat farmer. And so my dad was, he was a grassroots type of guy. I mean, <laughs> he did not have any finesse when it came to giving instruction or communication. He just told you like it was, and if you got your feelings hurt, that's your problem. And so that's one of the things I loved about my dad is that he was so um, authentic and he was so genuine that when you um, when you were around my parents, they were they were such genuine people. But my dad, he was not the greatest uh, explainer or teacher. That my dad was so capable. He could build things. He could put things together. He could. There was just nothing he couldn't do. And if he didn't know how to do it, he'd find out how to do it. And it was just an inborn ability that he had to, uh, to put his hand to things and those things would work. And, but I remember I, was, I would have been about 15 or 16 years old. And I don't know how come, because I, I really didn't ever spend a lot of time with my dad growing up. He was so busy farming. And I don't know how come he got elected one day to teach me how to drive a stick shift. And so, um, of course, his pickup was a stick shift. And so he took me out on by his farm and he was going to teach me how to drive a stick shift. But my dad, it was so funny. He had no, um, he had no patience that if you didn't know what he knew, he would get... <laughs> He would get so impatient with you, and he would send some colorful language your way, you know? And so my dad, it was my dad, it was me, and then another farmer friend of my dad's, and the three of us are sitting in the dirty cab of his pickup. Daddy's, daddy's pickups were always so 
full of dirt because they, uh, they, uh, you know, they, they went with them everywhere on the farms and stuff. And in fact, my mother was the only one that would clean them out. My dad wouldn't even ever clean out his, his pickup. So mother would go out there occasionally clean it out. And she told us one day wheat was growing in the floorboard of his pickup because he had so much dirt in the floorboard and then seed had fallen in there and there was enough moisture or something somewhere and wheat was growing. So we always love these funny stories about my dad. So I don't know how in the world I ended up in one of those pickups trying to, trying to learn how to drive this stick shift. And daddy you know, Daddy drove us down there, and the guy's name that was with us was Jack. So it was Daddy, me, and Jack. <laughs> and, and Daddy put me in the driver's seat, and he said, okay, you put your foot on the clutch. And then he said, you let your foot off the clutch, and then you push your foot on the gas. So I did that. And for those of you who know how to drive a stick shift, you know exactly what happened. The thing jumped and died. <laughs> and it just lunged ahead. And so daddy gave me some colorful, you know, communication there. And so I started the pickup again and I put my foot on the clutch. And I, he said, okay, put your foot on the clutch. Cause you had your left foot on the clutch, your right foot on the brake. He said, take your right foot off the brake. He said, then take your foot off the clutch and then push on the gas. So I did. And of course, you know what happened is that that thing lunged and it died again. And this happened <laughs> several times. And daddy said, I don't know why you can't do this. And I go, well, I'm doing what you're saying. I don't know why it's dying. And then Jack was just real quietly sitting, you know, against the passenger's door, <laughs> observing this catastrophe going on. And finally, Jack in his mercy on me, just so sweet said, Nancy, he said, at the same time that you're letting your foot off the clutch, at the same time, push on the pedal on the gas. I go, oh, well, that's a far cry different than what daddy said. Daddy said, just take your foot off the clutch then put your foot on the gas. And so I did it the way daddy said. I would, thought I was doing what he said, but it didn't work. But when, Gat, when Jack gave that little bit of instruction from then on, the, the car, it, just, it worked, you know? The car quit jumping, it quit dying, and we were moving ahead. Why? Because I finally learned the ways of driving a stick shift. So although I I had I knew the will, so to speak, uh, the will was that my daddy was trying to teach me that he wanted me to drive a stick shift, but the ways of doing it were escaping me until Jack said something. So much of the time, we know what we're trying to do. We're trying to, we're trying to cooperate with God, receive healing, to receive prosperity, to receive victory over something, but things are not getting, um, they're not playing out the way we think. Well, what is it? It's not that we don't know the will of God. It's we have to better know the ways of God and become skillful with the ways of God. So once we know his will, we must also learn the ways of how his will can come to pass. I, I was listening to Brother Norval, Norval Hayes, and you know, for those of you who never got to sit under Brother Norval's ministry, you need to get online and watch some of his services. I mean, with him teaching faith and healing, some of the best stuff out there on faith and healing. And one of the things that he was saying in one of his services, because you know, Brother Norval was raised Baptist, and while he was raised in that Baptist church, his family was faithful to attend, faithful to go. His mother raised him in the church. And man, they understood the need of salvation, you know, and, and um, of getting born again and things. But what they didn't know was they didn't know the will of God concerning healing and they didn't know the ways of God. And so because of that, his mother ended up dying in her 30s and left these two young boys without a mother. And then uh, just a couple of years after his mother died, his brother turned 19 years old and his brother died. So you can imagine the heartbreak 
in Norval Hayes' life because of the, the, the havoc that sickness and disease had, had, had worked in his family. And Brother Norval made this statement. He said this, he said, seek and ye shall find, of course, quoting scripture. And I would say this, we only find what we seek. And um, then Brother Norval went on and he said this, I could find the loving, saving God in my church, but when I needed a healing and a miracle, I couldn't find him because I didn't seek to know him as a miracle worker and as a healer. You have to have knowledge in line with your need. Listen to that statement. You have to have knowledge in line with your need. That means you have to not only know the will of God, you have to know the ways of God. Then Brother Norval went on and said, you can love on God and he will love you back, but that's no sign that you'll receive healing. What you send to heaven is what heaven gives you back. You send love and heaven loves you back. But to know and worship him as your healer and he will be your healer. Call him your healer. As you send that call to heaven, that's what you receive. Call him your partner in success, of success in your business and you'll have success. God wants all good things for you more than you want them for yourself, but you have to seek him and know how he operates. Now that is so critical, that is so key. You know, I was raised in a Methodist church, precious people, but we did not know, we, we did not even know about the will of God being salvation for us. I mean, we just heard do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That was basically the foundation scripture, but we weren't taught salvation. We weren't taught how to receive salvation in that Methodist church. And so I grew up with the idea that if you believe that God exists, that means you're a Christian. Well, that's not what the word says. The word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so uh, when I came to see that it was a will of God for salvation, I also had to learn the way of salvation, that is call on the name of the Lord to be saved. Well, it's the same thing with healing. It's the same thing with prosperity. It's one thing to know that it's God's will for you. It's another thing to know his way. So it's through finding out through the word of God, not just the will of God, but the ways of God, how he operates. You know, um, if you're doing all you know to do, when you're faced with a need, you're doing everything you know to do and you're still not receiving your help, you're still not receiving your answer, then the th problem is you just don't know enough. <laughs> you don't know enough about the ways of God and how to cooperate with him, how to receive what he provides for you. So when we need something from God, we have to find out how he works. The Bible doesn't just reveal the will of God. It also reveals the ways of God, how he accomplishes his will. So what faith does is move you to share, to share your responsibilities with God in the sense of there's a part that we have to play in experiencing the will of God. We have to approach him uh, the way the word says. Faith is not just knowing the will of God, but it's also discovering the ways of God and then taking those ways, going those ways. It's a combination of the will and ways of God coupled together that ensures our success. You know, in Psalms 103 and verse 7, it says, God made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So, the Israelites, they knew, God acts, they knew God's acts, but Moses knew his ways. Think of it this way. Um, if you see a, a fine artist, I have a, a friend who is a fine artist. His artwork is phenomenal. And so he will at times gift me with something that he has painted. And I'm always so impressed with his acts. I mean, that to see a finished painting, that's his acts. And so when I see that, it's so impressive. 
But what I've not ever gotten to do is go into his heart studio and watch him paint. That's his ways of how he arrives at something. Well, see, the Bible says that God's people knew his acts, but Moses knew his ways. And this is what we have to understand. It's not just seeking, God, I need my answer. It's seeking to know the ways of God so that you can cooperate with him to receive what it is that you need. I want to read to you again in Psalms chapter 95, verses 10 and 11, and this is the Amplified. It says about those that God delivered out of Egypt. It says, 40 years long, I was grieved and disgusted with that generation. And I said, it is a people that do err in their hearts for they do not approve, acknowledge or regard my ways. Wherefore, I swore in my wrath that they would not enter into, into my rest, which is the land of promise. So basically, the Hebrews weren't interested in learning the ways of God. They just, they certainly wanted uh, to get into the promised land, but they didn't want to bring their faith. They didn't want to do their part. And you have to learn this. God has a will for our life, but it doesn't happen automatically. We have to cooperate with God's will. And so because they were not interested in learning his ways, they weren't interested in cooperating with him, then they didn't receive all that was his will for them to have as a result of not knowing his ways. He was displeased with them. And because of that, they never entered in to what he had for him. I don't know about you, but I don't want God to provide something for me and me not experience it. I want to receive all that God has. And so to do that, we have to learn the ways of God. Well, I will say this, we have to learn the ways of faith because that's how we conduct business with heaven is on the basis of faith. It's faith that pleases God. And so you have to learn the faith, uh, the ways of faith. Um, I want to read to you Psalms 27 and verse 11. The King James says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. The Amplified of that, of that verse says, teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain and even path because of my enemies, those who lie in wait for me. So when we follow his ways, the enemy who lays traps for us, they will fail in their mission. They won't be able to trip us up when we know uh, the ways of God of how to cooperate with him. Knowing and taking his ways will cause us to arrive at safety. You know, um, just religion, people who um, really, mm, let's say they're, they're more religious than knowledgeable, Basically, they say, well, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. But there's nothing knowledgeable in that. That's not, that's not scriptural. God reveals in his word his will, but he also reveals his ways of how he does things. And so when you need something from God, you not only have to know his will in that situation, you have to know his ways uh, for, for that to be, to be received. I remember years ago there was somebody that was um, that I was around uh, periodically, and they weren't born again, and um, <clears throat> and so I was telling them I I was asking them I said have you been born again, and they said to me they says don't don't even don't even go there with me I have my own way of believing well <laughs> well when they're, they were older, much older than I was. And so uh, I, don't, I don't know if they ever got born again. But basically what they were saying is I have my own way. Well, if you're going to receive what God has, you have to have his will and his ways. That it, you have to come to, it has to come to pass his ways. It can be frustrating when you know the will of God, but you don't know the ways of God. You can look and say, I know God has healing for me, but I, why am I not healed? I know God has provision for me, but why am I not provided for? Why am I constantly under financial struggle? Or I know God has victory for me. How come it seems like I keep failing? It can be frustrating when you know the will of God without knowing the ways of God. It's almost like a hungry man who sees food through the bakery window. He can see it there, but he can't access it. Well, I will say this, learn the ways of God. When you feed on the word, 
note what is his will, but also note the ways that are lined out. There are so many ways that are revealed to us in the word. It talks in Romans chapter four, verse 17, it talks about Abraham. Now see, it was the will of God for him and his wife to have a child because she, had, she was barren. She was unable to have a child. So he knows the will of God, but the will of God isn't coming to pass because he's not operating in the ways of God. And so finally, uh, God changes his name and he begins calling himself Abraham, which means the father of many nations. So what's he doing? He's putting what God says in his mouth. One of the primary ways of God for you to receive the will of God is you call. You call yourself what God calls you. The Bible says in Romans 4, 17, it said that Abraham called those things which be not as though they were. The ways of God is when you have a need, then you call yourself supplied. So if you, if you need healing, you say, I call myself healed in Jesus' name. That is the way of faith, and that is the way of God. If you need provision, then uh, you don't just say, oh, I know God. I, I just, I just love, God loves me. I just love God. That's not how, that's not the way that provision comes to you. Yes, he does love you, but you have to know some ways. Well, what is the way? You have to call yourself prosperous. You have to call, say, I call the money that I need to come to me. I call God's provision into my life. You have to call it. Remember what the Old Testament says? It says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I am rich. What is that? That's revealing the ways of God. You don't call it the way it is. You call it the way you want it to be. So when something that you need isn't there, faith tells it to get there. And that is one of the ways of God so that your needs are met and your needs are supplied. So instead of calling yourself fearful, say, thank you, Father, that I'm free from fear. That is the way of God. It's the way of faith. When you need healing, I call my body free from pain. I call my arm functioning right, my leg functioning right, my organs function right, my thyroid functioning right. I call it, I call it healed and I call it whole. It's not enough to know that it's God's will that you be healed. You have to employ the ways of God. And this is where a lot of people miss it. This is where a lot of, a lot of, if I could say this religious thinking comes in, because people have the idea, well, if God wants it for me, he'll give it to me. Well, God wanted his people that he delivered from Egypt to arise, arrive at the promised land, but that first generation never did because they would not cooperate with the ways of God. God has a part, but man has a part. And our part is to co is to learn the will of God, but also learn the ways of God. And that's called being a doer of the word. So I want to encourage you in that tonight. I just, I love being able to spend a few moments with you and encourage you in these different things because we all need them. And so um, uh, learn to uh, call those things which be not as though they were. That's one of the primary ways of faith, that you call the things you need to come. And it's not just calling once. It's a lifestyle of calling. I call myself healed. I call myself whole. I call myself blessed. I call myself provided for. I call the wisdom I need. I call all that I need that God's provided for me to come to me. We have to cooperate with God through knowing his will and knowing his ways. I want to remind you we've got a service coming up shortly at 7 o'clock uh, Pacific time, and we would love to have you join us. I'll be ministering tonight, so we look forward to seeing you then. And otherwise, we will see you this same time next week. God bless you. Love you.